Hello everybody, it's Miss Jessica and I'm back here again for our chapter book story time. We're going to be continuing our Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein. Normally I'm at EVPL McCullough, but today I'm at home so you might see some of my kitties um, pop in the screen as we're recording today. And also uh, my allergies are just acting up and I've got a bit of a scratchy throat. So I do have a cough drop in my mouth uh, just in case you're wondering what in the world is she chewing on? So we have been asking some questions before we start reading and my question for you today is kind of about the last couple chapters. They were talking about books and authors and one of them that they mentioned is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So my question to you is that has been made into both a book and a movie. What do you prefer? Do you prefer to watch the book to watch the movies or read the books? I am one of those people, I actually like watching the movie first and then reading the book because I always think that the book is better. So what do you like to do? Do you like to watch the movie or read the book of different things that they've made and to either a book or a movie? All right, so we're gonna be starting with chapter 32. Okay, Sierra said Kyle, it's your turn. Sierra flicked the spinner the pointy tip ended up in the yellow 200 zone, so she went ahead and pulled a yellow card. It's definitely for the 200 section, she said, showing her clue to Miguel before revealing it to Kyle and Akimi. Weird, said Miguel. What, said Akimi before Kyle could. Well, the 200s are where they keep books on world religions, but there are two numbers on this card, said Sierra. Maybe this time we need to find two books, suggested Kyle. I don't know, said Sierra, studying her card. 220.5203 is obviously a call number. Obviously, said Akimi, but this other number isn't in the proper format. 22015. February 20th, 2015, said Akimi. Quick, what happened on that date? Um, nobody knows, said Kyle, because it hasn't happened yet. Oh, right. How about February 20th? 1915? That was the opening day of the Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco, said Sierra. Jaws dropped. Sorry, I'm a big World's Fair fan. Everybody else just nodded. Finally, Miguel spoke up. Look, let's just go down to the 200s room and find 220.5203. We can figure out the second chunk later. The team once again tripped down to the second floor and worked their way around the circular balcony. You guys, said Sierra, looking across the atrium at the statues. Remember how they switched all the hologram authors when Bridget Watch did her extreme challenge? Yep, said Kyle. She was doing good till she got to the Russian dude. What Russian dude? asked Miguel, who hadn't witnessed Bridget's elimination. Guy who wrote five or six books Sierra could tell you about? But look, said Sierra, now all the author statues are the same ones they were last night. So, said Kyle thoughtfully, if they can switch them around. These must be clues for our game, blurted Akimi. She pulled out a pen in her notepad. I'll write down their names. Start with the guy under the triple zeros wedge of the Wonder Dome, suggested Kyle. Right. Akimi read the label pedestal and jotted down all the author's names. Thomas Wolfe, Booker T. Washington, Stephen Sondheim, George Orwell, Lewis Carroll, Dr. Seuss, Maya Angelou, Shel Silverstein, pseudonym Bosch, Todd Strasser. So, said Akimi, when she finished writing, do you think this game could get any more complicated? Maybe, said Kyle, it's possible that Mr. Lemoncello left a couple different paths to the same solution. Well, personally, I can only take one path at a time, said Akimi. Let's go find 220 point whatever. Should be in the next row of bookcases, said Miguel. Here we go. 220.5203, the King James Bible. Ach, der Lieber, an excellent choice, said a man with a thick German accent. The four teammates spun around. They were face to face with a semi-transparent guy in med medieval garb with a fur-trimmed captain a beard that looked like two raccoon tails sewn together under his nose and chin. I am Johann Genslike, zur Leiden zum Gutenberg and the holographic image who had ink stains all over his fingertips. You created the Gutenberg Bibles on your printing press, gushed Sierra. Yeah, 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 big bestseller. You need help with the Bible? 
I am at your service, he bowed. Okay, said Akimi, turning to Miguel. Take it away, Miguel. Er, Gutenberg, sir, we're looking for 2 2015. Dast eek, I'm fuck. Huh? That is easy. 2 2015 is Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Of course, said Miguel. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. 20 and 15 are the chapter and verse. He flipped through some pages. Here we go. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Chapter 33. Let's put the two new cards on the table, said Charles. He and his so-called teammates, Andrew and Haley. Charles planned on dumping them right before he made his glorious solo exit from the library. Had scoured the library together for four hours looking for more book cover matches. Peckelman wasn't nearly as good with the Dewey Decimal System as he had claimed to be, and Charles needed someone to do that sort of thing for him. His father always hired tutors or research assistants for him whenever Charles had to do a major paper or report. Finally, around six in, coincidentally, the 600s room, they scored twice, finding T for you and me, 641.3372, and why wait to lose weight, 613.2522. Now their picture puzzle had only four blanks remaining. And here is their new cards that they added. Oh, and we have Lorax visiting. I think this is the first time she has been on camera. She's usually sleeping. So hi, Lorax. Okay, said Andrew, I think it's pretty clear. Wooly blank, walk up the skinny blank blank, house Indian and 19, blank. Charles nodded and said, interesting, even though he knew Peckelman was way off. Uh, hello, said Haley. That doesn't make any sense. Sure it does, said Andrew. Uh, no, it doesn't. In his head, Charles had decided, decoded the clue so far as, ew, a female sheep, blank, walk out of the T plus H plus E way, way, blank, blank, in, in past, in parentheses, past, P-A-S-T, blank. But out loud, he said, I think we just need to tweak Andrew's translation a little. Fine, go ahead, I don't care. Andrew slumped down in his seat to sulk. How about she blank walks out the skinny blank blank house 500 and past blank? Where'd you get she, asked Haley, from sheep, the card you gave us? Actually, I think the sheep is supposed to represent you because you is a female sheep. Fascinating, said Charles. I didn't figure that out. What he did figure out was that Haley Daly was much smarter than she assumed. She could be a serious threat and no way was Charles sharing his prize with anybody, especially her. And how did you get 500 from Indiana, she asked. Simple, Indianapolis, the capital of Indiana, is home to a race known as the Indy 500. Okay, so how about you blank, walk out the skinny blank blank inn because the Nancy Drew book was about an inn, 500 pass or past blank. Now Peckelman piped up, that makes more sense than what you said, Charles. Indeed, said Charles, sounding magnanimous. Perhaps the clues are telling us to locate a secret skinny passageway 500 paces past some landmark here in the library. Andrew was excited. This is like the pirate map from Treasure Island. Or, said Haley, maybe these clues are telling us we need to go out and find the four books we haven't found yet. We should split up. I'll go back to the 400s room. We've already been there, said Andrew. Well, you guys might have missed something. Good idea, said so Charles. He figured if Haley Daly wasted time retracing steps he and Andrew had already taken, she would find nothing new and become less of a threat. Let's meet that carrot, let's say seven. Fine, Haley left the meeting room. Charles went to the door and closed it. You know what we really need, he said to Andrew. Chocolate milk and maybe some cookies. Charles shook his head. Oh, no, Andrew, we need whatever clues Kyle Keeley and his team have found especially if they have our missing cards. Chapter 34. 
Viren left the instant she reached the second floor, Haley made her way around the 400s room. She figured that Charles and Andrew had probably missed something important in the foreign languages room because they'd spent too much time talking to these awesome mannequins that told them all about their American heritage. She rounded the bend. Haley saw Kyle Keeley and his crew tumble out of the 200s room. It looked like Miguel was carrying a Bible, but a Bible wasn't one of the books on display in the staff picks case. We're following separate paths to the same goal, Haley thought, and somewhere those two paths are going to collide. Haley slid her car down the reader slot in the four horn, 400's door. The lock clicked and she pushed the door open. The room was dimly lit. Bienvenida, bienvenue, with me. Welcome, boomed a voice from the ceiling speakers. Sorry, said Haley, blindly feeling her way forward and bumping into something hard and lumpy. This is the 400s room, home of foreign languages. Here, Haley, you can learn all about your American heritage. A bank of spotlights thumped on. Haley was basically hugging a department store mannequin. An overhead projector beamed a movie onto the dummy to her left, turning it into a perky woman who looked like Haley, who probably, who looking like Haley would probably look a couple of years after she graduated from college. Hello, Haley. Welcome to your American heritage. Let's begin your voyage. That's okay. I don't have time right now. I'm Haley Daly. My ancestors were Irish, okay? So we can skip the history lesson and suddenly the two mannequins at the far end of the row turn into sepia-toned versions of her great-great-great-grandmother and great-great-great-grandfather. Haley knew it was them because her dad had a bunch of old photographs hanging in their family room. The two dummies looked exactly like Patrick and Una Daly did on their wedding portrait. No man ever wore a scarf, around, scarf as warm as his daughter's arm around his neck, said Patrick, and his thick Irish broke. Your dad is proud of you, Haley. Thanks, but I really need to win this competition. Watch out for sneaky rascals, said Una. Them that would steal the sugar out of your punch. Haley had to smile. It sounded like her ancestors had met Charles Chillington. And always remember, said her great-great-great-grandfather, every woman's mind is her kingdom. Rule it wisely, lassie. I'm trying. This library can help, said her great-great-grandmother with a wink. And when she did, a secret panel in the wall slid open. What's going on? said Haley. You're our third visitor, boomed the jolly announcer in the ceiling. So, according to the American Heritage Dictionary of Idioms available in our reference department, by the way, the third time is the charm. Therefore, as our third visitor, you have won this charming bonus. Two bonuses in one day? She was right. Mr. Limoncello definitely wanted Haley Daly to win this game because clearly he knew she'd be the perfect best looking spokesmodel for his holiday commercials. Don't worry, sir, said Haley to the nearest TV camera. I won't let you down. She hurried through the open wall panel and into the 300s room on the other side. Ta-da! The first thing she saw was one of the books they'd been searching for all day long. True Crime Ohio, The Buckeye State's Most Notorious Brigands, Burglars, and Bandits by Claire Taylor Winters. She, opened the, she quickly opened the cover and found the hidden four by four card. It took her two seconds to decipher the clue. Oh, and we have to go. There's the clue. Bandits! Haley remembered another bit of Irish wisdom, something her dad said all the time. Never bolt your door with a boiled carrot. She decided to keep this new clue secret and secure. She wouldn't share it with Charles and Andrew. She just, Haley took off her left sneaker, folded the card in half, and slid the clue into her shoe for safekeeping. Where her sneak was laced up tight again, she took the True Crime Ohio book off its display stand and tucked it into a bookshelf, making sure it was in the proper position, right between 364.1091 and 364.1093. That way she'd know where to find it, if for whatever reason she needed the book again. Haley looked up at the nearest camera and flashed at her brightest toothpaste commercial smile. Go, Limoncello, go! That's a cheer I just made up. We can use it in one of your commercials after I win! And that's the end of chapter 34, so we're gonna stop there for today. And, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to see who's gonna win! They are all getting so many clues, and I wonder what they're all gonna make when they put them all together. 
Okay, so don't forget, if you wanna answer our question for this week, uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to read the book or watch the movie? So I, again, like to read, watch the movie and then read the book, but everybody is a little bit different, so I can't wait to see what you say. Don't forget to check out all of our amazing things. If you go to evpl.org, we've got all kinds of resources on there for our digital apps, our digital collection, and also links to our awesome EVPL Library YouTube page where you can find more of these chapters along with some other story times and even some science videos of fun things you can do at home. And I hope you are having a great day and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.